Hello everybody and thank you very much for joining us today for this special webinar for our international offer holders who will be joining us for programmes in September. Um, we're going to go through quite a bit of information today. The session is recorded, it's nothing to worry about, it's just in case anybody's connection drops, we'll be able to share a link to the recording over the coming weeks for you as well. Um, so I'm just going to introduce who we've got in the session today for you. Um, so my name's Kat and I work in the international office so I can help with any international queries you might have. Hi everybody, my name's Jess and I work with Kat in the international office. Hello, my name is Mimi Tessia. I'm Associate Dean International and um, I am also Programme Leader for Public Relations and Digital Communications. Hello everyone, I'm Dr Gwyneth James. I'm the Senior Lecturer in TSOL, so I'm the Programme Leader for the same programme um, and also the um, Admissions Tutor for Postgraduate uh, Students. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr Genevieve Bosa, Senior Lecturer in Media Communications and Programme Leader for the MA Journalism and Media Communications. Hi, I'm Dr Ben Nutt, I'm a lecturer in Politics and International Relations and Programme Leader for the MA International Relations. Excellent, thank you everybody. So. If you do have any questions throughout the session today, everybody, please do use the Q&A button on your screen. And then after the slideshow, we'll be going to Q&A live. So we'll be able to ask your questions to our panelists. So this is the perfect opportunity for you to ask specific questions about your programmes and studying at hearts as well. Now, just before we start, um, we'll give you a bit of an overview of what to expect today. So we're going to give you a bit of an introduction to some of the programmes that you'll be studying, um, including specific insights from MA TESOL, MA Public Relations and Digital Communications, MA Journalism and Media Communications and MA International Relations as well. We'll also be giving you a bit of an update on start of term preparation. So there are some things that you can do now to help you ready to get yourself ready for September. And then we're going to go to the Q&A. Now, before we start with the slideshow, we're just going to do a quick poll so that everybody in the room can see if maybe you've got a future classmate with you. Um, so I'm going to launch that on the screen now. And it's just to see what subject you'll be studying when you join us in Hearts in September. So there's lots of different options on here. You might have to scroll to find yours, but if you just select the one that is closest to what you'll be studying. So you might be coming to do um, a joint honours and you can select the one that would be your first primary subject as well. So for our panellists, just so you know what our viewers are seeing, we've got creative writing, journalism and mass communications, English language or literature, history, public relations and international relations, teaching English to speakers of other languages, media and film, folklore, philosophy and sociology as well. Now I can see lots of people are already inputting their answers, which is brilliant. We've still got um, a few people who haven't joined in. So if you do want to, if you're just joining the session now, we're just doing an interactive poll so we can see who we've got in the room today. So feel free to take part in that if you want to as well. And then I'm gonna close the polling in just a moment and we can have a look at who we've got in the room today. Excellent. So almost everybody did join in, which is brilliant. If you didn't have a chance to select your option and you do want to um, say what you did, you can put that in the chat as well. But we can see we've got a really nice mix in the room. Lots of people here for journalism and mass communications, public relations and international relations, TESOL, and then a few others for various other subjects as well. So you likely do have another classmate there with you in the audience. OK, now I'm going to pass to my colleagues now who give you a bit of introduction to your programmes. Hello, everyone. Um, so just a, a general slide and a general introduction to begin with. Kat, can I ask you to, to move that on, please? 
So uh, you can see um, on the left hand side uh, an image of the university, part of the university. Uh, this is the College Lane campus, that's the bigger of the two campuses. Uh, we have de Havilland campus, this slightly smaller campus, and College Lane, this bigger one here. Um, and this is just an overview with a few bullet points uh, to give you a flavour of the University of Hertfordshire. Um, I think uh, a key thing that I wanted to raise from this slide is that uh, the university does give you exceptional opportunities to learn uh, and to develop, not just academically, um, but we also want to develop you as a uh, members of society too, uh, and with transferable skills. So um, please uh, do bear that in mind uh, when you come to study. It's not all about academia. Of course, that's the most important thing, but we want to develop uh, other skills that you can then go on to use beyond your studies. Um, another important point is that many of our academics are published in their field. And just on that second bullet point there on the slide, you can see uh, some examples of um, what that is and what that looks like. Uh, each of the programmes here represented today, there are four master's programmes that we will be uh, giving you a little flavour of, um, but each of those have a huge variety of modules uh, to choose from in a range of uh, subjects. Um, I'm sure you have uh, already looked at the web pages before you applied, so you have some idea, um, but uh, do go and have a look at the web pages or take use uh, of the Q&A that we'll have at the end of this session today uh, to ask us further details with regard to the academic content of the programme. Uh, I think also we have our, our um, email addresses on the slides, uh, so you are very welcome to email us and ask us for more detail if you are not able to ask today, or perhaps you forget because, as Kat said, there is a lot of information uh, that we are going to, to go through in a very short space of time today. So do feel free to email us um, if that is uh, something you would like to, to know more about. Um, we also have internships and guest speaker talks with leading practitioners on the programmes, uh, a creative writing academy, and uh, from 2023 this year, uh, we are 13th in the UK for English. So just to kind of give you a little flavour, of course, this is by no means uh, all of the um, attributes and their kind of key selling points and, and wonderful things about the university, but it's just to give you an idea uh, of some of those things which are very pertinent to um, our programmes. Uh, thanks, Kat. Oh, sorry, all the slides stuck. Let me just see if oh, I can no. move it along. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a bit of extra time to take in the facts on there, though. Let me just see if I can read. Yeah, exactly right. Everybody. It's difficult, isn't it, to read and listen at the same time? Oh, one second, everybody. Right, I'm just going to refresh the slides, everyone. Thank you very much for waiting for us. As we've said before, do feel free to pop in the chat um, if you didn't get a chance to answer that poll earlier today, just so you can see if you do have any fellow classmates there as well. And then at least you might be able to start making some connections. This is just reloading now and then I'll reshare the screen in just a moment. There we go. just loading now apologies about this everybody but we are we are live so bear with us and hopefully you can see that screen now is this the the next slide for me Kat sorry yes yes it is Brilliant. sorry yeah so uh, as you can see here, I'm not going to read all of this out. Uh, I'll give you a moment to read for yourself, but uh, just to introduce the slide, uh, to give you again a flavour, this is by no means all, of course, it can't possibly be, uh, the opportunities and career prospects uh, available to you um, as students and uh, potential graduates of the programmes that you have uh, selected. So let me give you a moment uh, to have a quick read through that. Or of course, if you're watching the recording, just pause uh, perhaps and, and uh, take some of that in. Thanks, Kat. So with regard to engagement and attendance, I'm guessing um, 
this is just a, another um, general uh, slide for you to, to be aware of. Uh, please don't worry if you forget all of this, as Kat said, um, it's being recorded. So you can go back to this at another point in time. Um, we would expect and we would ask that you are ready to start your course on the programme start date. Uh, that is generally uh, towards the end of September, uh, but you will be receiving communications once uh, your uh, offer has been confirmed uh, and you have accepted the offer and all the, the other steps and stages that are involved between uh, making an application and then actually being here. There's quite a lot of information, I think, uh, that we will share with you later on in that regard. Um, but yes, please do be aware that the courses uh, start uh, at the end of September, mid to end of September. Um, so in your planning, uh, that is, is really important. Um, I think, uh, I don't know if things are going to be said about visas and flights, but, you know, book these things well in advance because we have no control over visas at the university, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and they can take time uh, to come through. Um, engagement with studies is monitored for international students. Um, and so on a weekly basis, uh, you will be asked, I don't know where my card is, sorry, I can't show it to you, but you will have an ID card and you will be asked to swipe that or touch it on, on many, many, many points uh, around the university. So, so don't worry about trying to locate one. Uh, it's just that we can kind of track you uh, for home office and visa regulations. Um, you will need to attend face-to-face -face sessions. That is, I think, the beauty of our programmes. Uh, we do offer blended learning, but um, we also expect uh, to see you um, in person uh, on the university campus uh, to teach face-to-face. -face. Um, uh, if your engagement is below 80%, you may be withdrawn from the programme, um, uh, but that is something we can come to, and you would be discussing with your programme leader anyway if you uh, are finding there are issues with your attendance. I think a really important point, actually, um, which has been made here is to ensure that you are living within an easy commute of campus so that you can attend all sessions. Um, and just to, if I may uh, very quickly give a little well, story, I suppose, uh, from my own programme this year, I think some students uh, looked at the map uh, as where they are, um, where you are now, they were last year. And so May, June time, they looked at the map of the UK. They looked at London. Yes, we are within uh, easy distance of London, but um, if you are having to come onto campus, you know, two or three times a week, uh, you need to be aware that London is a very big city and uh, it's not exactly as next door, perhaps, as you might hope. Uh, it can take time to travel across London. I'm just going to be really honest with you. Uh, so some students had issues with public transport, especially uh, buses. Um, so please, please um, make sure that you are, if at all possible, in Hertfordshire um, or you live very close to a train station or a bus station um, that you can kind of then um, access uh, the university and, and uh, commute uh, on a uh, very, very easily, I guess. Thank you, Kat. So we're going to start uh, with each of the four programmes. Uh, I will start with my programme, which is the MAT Soul, uh, Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. Um, thanks, Kat. So why TESOL at Hearts? Um, one of the key, if not the key selling point of this particular postgraduate programme is uh, the practical teaching component. Uh, it's a central feature of the programme, and we have three modules out of uh, 10, I think it is, um, uh, which focus on um, practical teaching. Um, the other modules that we have cover, um, not all, uh, not every programme can cover everything, but cover all the key areas of applied linguistics and TESOL. Uh, TESOL is uh, a subject that sits very nicely within applied linguistics. Uh, so we look at um, the English language, um, we don't just look at grammar and, and spelling and uh, kind of the basics that perhaps uh, people would have learnt if you do speak English as a second language, that's fantastic. Uh, what we do is we build on the knowledge that you already have. You can already speak English, you can already engage with it, you can already write and read and so on. But if you're going to teach it, uh, then we have to go much, much deeper than what you have probably already experienced in your learning so far, or perhaps if you're already teaching and you're teaching so far. So we have a particular module dedicated to linguistic analysis uh, for teachers or for trainee teachers. Um, if you have uh, years of experience or even one or two years or even one or two months of experience or no experience, you can come and do this particular programme here at Hertfordshire. 
And so that we understand that everybody starts from a kind of level playing field, we, we do offer this first module uh, to check that uh, people have a, um, a similar understanding of the intricacies and the complexities of the English language. It's not quite so easy as many would perhaps assume. So we look at phonology, syntax, lexis, pragmatics and so on to enhance your knowledge uh, to be able to teach the English language the most effectively that you can. Then we have another module looking at theoretical insights into how languages are learned. This covers the field of second language acquisition. We touch on first language acquisition, um, but obviously we're teaching second language. Um, and so uh, we look at primarily how we learn second languages and then how we can uh, teach those second languages. If you don't understand how we learn a second language, Arguably, you're not going to be able to understand the methodology and the pedagogy uh, behind teaching that second language, uh, whether it's English or another language, but obviously we're focusing on English for this particular MA. Um, the theoretical insights that you gain from all of the modules uh, can really help in the practical uh, elements. And that's something that we're very um, keen on. We're very um, focused on really to, to bridge theory and practice in TESOL. Uh, you can't really have one without the other. And this program makes the best use of uh, both theory and practice. So you need both. Uh, you can't have just one. Uh, one other module that we have, the next one there, is the study of the extent and range of uses of English in global contexts. It's called Teaching English to um, in International Contexts. And um, you may be aware, you may not be aware that English is no longer really uh, the kind of um, possession, as it were, of the native speaker. Native actually is quite a contested term. We look at that. Um, but English, of course, is spoken all around the world as a lingua franca, um, a common language. But uh, beyond that, it's also uh, spoken in many different areas of the world as a variety. So uh, in Singapore, for example, they have Singlish. And we look at what that means, what it looks like. We look at its kind of um, status, I guess, and um, the attitudes towards it uh, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of literature, a lot of research being done into sort of um, validating I guess uh, these varieties of English that are spoken elsewhere and what that means for you uh, as a teacher because there's a kind of real tension between standard English which is the one that is pushed in course books and exams um, and, and varieties of English so that's a real kind of tension that we examine in this uh, module here. We have a module dedicated to course and syllabus design. Uh, teaching is a, a very complex profession um, and so we do cover quite a lot of these areas uh, if you're not a big uh, fan of course and syllabus design, um, may I say that I wasn't either when I did uh, my uh, MA, uh, but this was a really fascinating module, uh, just at least to give me an insight into what goes into uh, developing a course uh, and developing a syllabus for uh, English language teaching. It's very complex, um, but equally it's fascinating. You get to see uh, the other side, as it were, not the kind of teaching side, but the kind of course creation side, and that's a really valuable skill even if you don't go on then to to write your own courses or write your own syllabi we uh, have a research methods module most ma programs i think do uh, this is to help you prepare for your research uh, in terms of the dissertation that you'll be expected to do um, and then finally we have the dissertation uh, which as i've put in brackets here is an independent empirical research project with an allocated supervisor uh, I think I miscalculated the modules. We have nine modules, not 10. Maths was never my strong point. Um, our assessment is extremely varied, I think, because it maps onto um, what you are expected to do as a professional, as a teacher. Uh, we do have one or two essays, but really essays are, are not what we focus on. Uh, we have lots of analysis of course books, reflective logs, presentations, case studies, test design, and so on. Uh, skills that you can then transfer to your professional context once you've graduated um, and the wonder of this I think is that you can teach anywhere in the world after you have this particular um, degree thanks Kat Uh, just some student feedback uh, before I finish my uh, session on uh, TESOL uh, so I'll give you a moment to read that
The one thing I just would like to emphasize very briefly is in that purple bubble uh, where the student uh, said that she has changed as a person. And this goes back to what I said um, a few slides ago, that we are, of course, developing your academic skills and knowledge of the subject, but also we want you to develop as uh, people. So thank you very much. I think that's my last slide. Yeah, so we don't need to watch this, Kat, I think for time, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm here to tell you a little bit about public relations and digital communications. Could I have the next slide, Kat? So why would you take public relations and digital communications? Um, there's quite a lot of text on the slide, which is quite poor on my part, but I, I suppose it could be summed up in, in three main points. The first point is that with this kind of qualification, we're expecting you to go out and be a public relations professional. We have professional accreditation with the PR and Communications Association. We're very employment focused and we have good connections with industry. So if you wanted to be a public relations kind of expert, a professional, what kind of skills do you need? And um, what we've done is we've developed three programs. The first program is a one year route. Um, and this one year route covers the kind of basics. It's a conversion course. We're not expecting students to come in with knowledge about public relations or media beforehand. So we'll teach you everything that you need to know um, in uh, throughout the year, but starting with public relations theory and practice. Then we go on to crisis and reputation management and advertising and marketing communications in semester A. In semester B, we do research methods. Uh, we also do a digital communication management module and uh, we do media production, which I lead on. Then for the final semester, we, or you, would um, do a dissertation. So that's the one year route. There's a there's two other routes. Uh, the two year route um, is the same. Everything that I've described for the one year route or the modules anyway. And you'd in the second year, you'd go out and do a work placement and a dissertation, or you could take uh, another two year route, which has advanced research as the title. Uh, for this particular route, you would take uh, modules such as government communications and public affairs, you take advanced media research, and you'd also do either a media dissertation or a media project. Could I have the next slide, Kat? So what's it like to study on these courses? Well, uh, in public relations, what you do really need is the ability to be a very good communicator. Uh, you have to be a good speaker, you have to be a good listener, a good presenter, and many of the courses that you'll be taking with us, many of the modules you'll be taking with us, is trying to either develop or enhance the existing skills that you have. So one of the key characteristics of a PR professional is the ability to distill really very complex ideas and communicate them well. So this means you'll be communicating them in a written format, in a verbal format or in a visual format. You know, you, you need to be able to communicate with different stakeholders and different audiences. And we'll teach you to do that, whether we are teaching you through um, case studies, authentic um uh, authentic assessments that are based in, in real world activities. Um, the types of assessments we have, I, I should say that we, we don't have any exams on the course, so it's all coursework. Uh, you might be um, giving presentations either in a group or um, individually. You might be pitching for um, business with your amazing creative ideas. 
Uh, you might be creating social media campaigns or, or visual promotions. Um, we'd like you to measure the level of success that you have doing any of these kinds of assessments. We, um, you, you'll be, if you, if you created a campaign for a particular promotion, we would expect you to have a good understanding of Google Analytics and um, also different types of research to look at how you can uh, measure that level of success. The research is um, kind of a mixture of theoretical and also research into professional practice. Uh, you'd have to be quite sensitive to the kind of nuances of, of language uh, and the way that you use language to communicate to your stakeholders. Um, I've got a good example here. If you consider the pandemic, uh, you have a lot of public messaging, which has had to be very, very carefully handled because you, well, the UK government wanted um, the public to uh, take up vaccinations and was very interested in public safety, but at the same time, trying not to frighten the public into antisocial behavior. Um, the types of assessment you'll have will be very much based on the modules. So, for example, within media production, uh, you'll have a, a real world kind of um, scenario and you'll be creating digital publications and promotional um, social media campaigns to promote that publication. We've had lots of amazing um, assessments this year. We've had one about, um, it's, a, it's a kind of ghost hunting magazine, digital magazine based in India. That was amazing. Um, and some of the social media campaigns, they've been making TikTok videos and all, all sorts of things, very creative. You also need a very good range of research skills. So it's um, you have to be accurate and communicate authoritatively on a subject. Um, so, you know, we'd welcome graduates from science or history or creative arts. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that you are able to keep track of kind of change in society so you're looking towards the future it's not about what PR is currently it's about what PR might be in five to ten years so we'd like a kind of naturally curious student someone who can learn quickly who can channel knowledge about the world to benefit a client or a product or an organization um you would need to be able to use soft uh, research skills, so qualitative analysis, such as customer reviews, interviews, and also hard data, some quantitative analysis, something from maybe Google Analytics. Um, you need to be able to write engaging um, content for um, your brand clients. Uh, you might be writing an article for a magazine one day or a press release the next. You should be confident in terms of using language and you need a really good attention to detail because you might be um, you might be in charge of a website or a social media campaign where lots of people are feeding into it. Uh, an international mindset is very useful. Uh, most employers are uh, fairly global these days in their outlook, and they would appreciate graduates who have um, other languages to offer. And finally, creativity. Um, public relations, business does not stand still. Uh, you'll never have one day uh, uh, like any other day. You need to be able to come up with fresh ideas. You need to be thinking um, quite laterally about your product or your service or, or whatever your brand is. And in terms of you as a kind of PR professional, it, it can be quite glamorous. It could be quite day to day if you're working on um, uh, kind of public information films. 
but it's never going to be no one day will be the same um and so if you like projects if you're organized if you've got a good grasp of language if you um if you're creative this is the kind of career that i think you might like thank you cat Good morning, everyone. So welcome to the MA Journalism and Media Comms. I did see a few people that said they were um, coming to the call. So yay, look forward to seeing you in September. Please, please come early, as Gwyneth said earlier um, when she was presenting. Thanks, Kat. Next slide, please. I just want to talk briefly about the program. I cannot exhaust the program in the time we have, but why? Why MA? Now, the four things I want you to bear in mind, the four of them are here. The employment prospects, of course, the teaching excellence, the work placement opportunities. Yay, I'll talk about that. And industry connections. So with the employment prospect, I think I'll start from teaching excellence because it's important for you to know that you are going to be taught by experienced team of award-winning lecturers, um, senior people in the industry, practitioners, people that have gone, have had years of experience, still have um, things to do in the industry. So um, people that are researching the industry. So it's very, very important for you to bear that in mind. And all the modules are closely matched to the experience experience and the expertise of the lecturers so you are in safe hands now let's go to career, um, employment prospects most of her graduates have gone into wonderful roles and space could not well the space is not enough for me to exhaust all the places they have gone to but as you can see we have people that have been um, press officers social media analysts um head of um media relations, strategic communication leads. Um, we've also had people that have been um, marketing managers, you know, because of the range of courses that we offer. So the employment prospects are really good on the program. And I encourage you when I go into talking about uh, work placement, for you to start early and also the research opportunities that we offer on the program. So work placement. If you're on the program, there's three pathways. One is the one year pathway. If you're registered for just one year, then you have a short placement. We call it the short work experience where you go into a place and stay with them for about a month, come back and feedback to us. And it's absolutely great. If you're on the two year program, that means you're with us for one year and then you go into the workplace for one year or minimum of 30 weeks, where you deploy the skills that you have learned um, and then gain experience in a different sector and, of course, update the skills that you have. That students that have gone on this previous year just have just come back. They came back on May uh, 15th, and we have wonderful stories. So when you come, one thing we do during the induction is I get you to meet all the students. So you meet the students that came in September, you meet the students that are just about to leave, and then you ask all the questions because sometimes when I say things, they always believe me, but you believe the students more, which is fine. And I can assure you they have wonderful things to say. Work placement. Now we also have research opportunities, which leads me to the third pathway. If you are doing the journalism and media communications with advanced research, then you have the foundation if you want to go into a PhD. And I like to plug the PhD so that you can start from that to do. Most of the courses are similar, but in advanced research, you do what we call the advanced research module, hey, hence the name. And then we go into a bit more. Industry connections is one big thing that we are so passionate about. Because of the work experience and because of the expertise, because of the kind of caliber of people, one of the lecturers we have is a three-time award-winning 
um, editor. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah, so we have we have we have those kinds of people on the program. So we have great industry connections, and these industry connections help us to. So I don't want to say supplement, but I will use that word because sometimes theory is not just about when you discuss it in class. When we bring somebody that is doing that in the field, it almost feels like, oh, light bulb moment. And then it's like, wow, I actually get it, even though, you know, some of us have been in the field. So it's very important for you to look out for these opportunities when you come in, read your emails, reply your emails, because all of that will come. Um, the industry connections are powerful. Part of the industry connections have led us to our accreditation, which I will talk about, um, have also led us to um, international events that the students have been able to attend. And they have met um, the managers at Instagram, the VP in TikTok, uh, and it's just been wonderful. So these are some four great things for you on the journalism and media comms. Uh, yeah, we look forward to it. Next slide, please. See some of the modules, some, because I didn't put all of them, some. Um, I will just start with the ones on the screen. And I know that you've been to the website, you already have your offer letter, so you have an idea of some of the modules, but these are the ones that I'll just highlight on today. I'll start with corporate comms because I teach that. Corporate comms, ideally we call it corporate comms and PR. And here we look at corporate branding. We look at the importance of understanding internal and external communication and how you can position certain messages for your audience. Now, there is also the stakeholder analysis looking at who am I talking to, do you know? So it was very important before we got on this call for us to understand who are we talking to? Okay, international offer holders, great. How do we tailor the message? Because if it's home students, then the messaging, similar message, but it will be framed differently, which is also what you would see as we go on the programs with the journalism courses, the framing, the news value, the news angle, the importance, the in-depth knowledge of these things and why we use theory to scaffold. Most people go into journalism, you know, you could just wake up, get your ring lights, get a camera and like launch a YouTube video. Amazing. But there are theories that scaffold what you do, why you do, how you do it, when you should do it, and how you can evaluate the things you do, the ethics the legal challenges that occur in doing these things. And of course, the research that goes in. Everything we do is underpinned by research. Journalism skills and reporting, looking at the current trends, so we do research. What are the current trends? Who is reading what's where, why? During the pandemic, I conducted a survey looking at how, uh, where people were getting their inf sources of information regarding the news, and we saw a surge in TV. And after the pandemic, the surge in TV, of course, plummeted, and we're back to mobile news. Even in mobile news, what kinds of mobile platforms, very important. So we look at the trends. It helps us to inform. As they say, data is the new oil. So if we have data, then we can you know, plan effectively, look at different forms of journalistic content. We'll do that on mobile journalism, journalism skills and reporting, sports journalism, your writing, your interviewing skills, your technical skills, the short form, the long form of writing. Very important. If you really love to write, we'll take your creative flair and, you know, help you channel it properly. And you can produce um, journalistic stories, mobile journalistic stories, different shades, forms, absolutely amazing. We also have uh, media production, which we share with PR. And I'll tell you a really lovely story about that module when we get to, I think, the next slide also. Um, video content creation is one that we love. So with the video content creation, we're looking at how, um, the explosion of video content and why this has happened recently and what you can do, how you can use that to create short films, how you can use that to create documentaries, how you can use that to tell a story. It is important in telling a story, how do you tell this story? So when you are shooting your TikTok and your reels, you are telling a story, but then 
you're telling that story to a certain kind of audience. Now you are harnessing the skills. We'll look at the post-production, post-evaluation. We'll then look at why you were doing this. All of these, um, I think the person that is handling the video content creation is a skilled documentary um, maker who has, yeah, it's amazing. I'll just leave that. I'm sure you meet her during the induction. So these are some of the modules that you see. And of course we have research modules. I just then put them on the screen. There are research modules that you would take with us when you join us. Next slide, please. Assessments. I absolutely love talking about assessments. <laughs> I know what to give. Yes, I love talking about assessments because assessments are not our way to try you. Our assessments are ways for you to build your portfolio. That's for me, that's the main thing. You have the chance to say, wow, I have developed a communication strategy, which you will do on corporate comms. And you can demonstrate to your prospective employer what you have done. So your assessment doesn't have to just live you know, in your folder after you've sent it. Use it as part of your portfolio. So we'll have some writing reports. You were going to have um, essays that you would write. You would have um, reports. Every module has its form of assessment. So you are not write, doing the same kind of assessment on different modules. You write a press release. It's a form of assessment. You would do a digital magazine. It's a form of assessment. On sports journalism, there will be a podcast element. Video content creation, that will be a video. You know, um, mobile skills and writing, that will be long form, short form, different forms of writing. So you are you were, you were tested holistically, and that's absolutely what I love. And of course, we would have simulation exercises. Simulation exercises are what we, what we use to mirror what will happen in real life. And I absolutely love the press conference that we have. I, well, I kind of tell them when the press conference will happen, but they don't know what the issue is. And they just walk into class that morning and bam, there's... There's a crisis and you have to deal with it. It's hilarious, it's amazing, it is lovely. But of course, now you are not reacting. You have learned the skills from the previous sessions and then you are interpreting in real life what will happen. So we, it's it's wonderful. So I look forward to um, do it, running that again. So you would have all those and different forms of um, assessment. Next slide, please. These are some of the, um, we, we have a professional accreditation uh, with the PRCA because of course we have journalism and PR, which gives you that um, strong base for you because oftentimes we've heard that students, oh, I see some questions. Oftentimes we've heard that students um, love both parts and are unsure. So, you know, we give you, as much, and then we have industry connections. These are just some, they're quite a lot. And as we come on the course, you would meet with some of them, you would talk with some of them, you would intern with some of them. Um, look forward to that amazing time. And the next slide is the story I want to share with you that happened um, on one of our courses. Next slide, please. This is a student testimonial. And she loves when we share this because something happens on her LinkedIn page, it kind of surges. So of the media production course, this student was tasked with creating a digital magazine. Um, wonderful. The question, the question was create a digital magazine, I think around Easter. So there was the incorporation of the different themes, the different ideas. You can see the writing was also there. Um, the thought process that went into it, they, I think they had a mood board. But what I always encourage students is share your assessment. So she shared it on LinkedIn. And of course, people talked about it. She, maybe maybe because she got a 95. I don't know if that's what, but it was really good. But no matter what you get, share it. So put in work as you're doing your assessment. So it's something you'll be proud of. So she shared it. And of course, she had 10,000 views. I don't know what it is now. Um, I'm sure it has increased because I've talked about it so much. 
but she got a call from the communication um, that handles Tesco, the communication company that handles Tesco, and she got um, an internship with them, all because she shared, all because she listened. So we look for, that's why I said, it's a portfolio for you. It's not just to sit and listen. We are co-creators in this work, on this journey with you. We're here to encourage you. We're here to support you. And we look forward to having you. And I think there's one more slide, uh, but I'm happy for you to, I don't know if we still have time to play it, but thank you. See you in September. We, I think it's really short, so we could just play. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks to everybody. Um, and I will just give a whistle stop tour of the MA in international relations uh, for us. Um, next slide, please. So I thought I would start the kind of discussion by just giving an overview of perhaps why international relations is the topic for you or why you should study international relations. Um, and there are three points, really. The first uh, is that it impacts everybody. Global politics and global political events uh, impact and influence everyone and everything that people do. So there's a, a kind of saying in the discipline that the global is local and the local is global. So all these kind of interactions that you're having at local level impact on a wider global scale. And in the same essence, things that happen at the global level narrow right down to the local level as well. Um, we've come through and, and are experiencing significant events, whether it's the most recent pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, whether it's climate change, whether it's the current and ongoing conflicts around the world, whether that's the war in Ukraine, whether that's Yemen, whether it's escapades in, in Syria that continue. Um, so it is happening. It's happening now. It's happening uh, where we are. And these are the kind of things we discuss. So it's a current kind of discipline. It, it influences everything we do. And I think the big point, uh, which I'll, I'll expand on now, is that the world is changing. It's significantly changing. Geopolitical, geoeconomic and geostrategic shifts are occurring all over the world. So we're seeing significant changes uh, uh, occurring at the moment, but also that are due to occur in the next 5, 10, 15 years. So the old world, perhaps the old uh, remnants of the colonial world are slowly disintegrating and moving. Um, and, and that's evidenced perhaps by the, the so-called decline of the US, which has been posited um, against or in opposition to the rise of uh, China and India in particular but also many, many other countries, okay, and, and shifts. And it's been called the hour of the global south. So that's this really important shift in terms of power and influence in the world. With this comes new ideas, new actors that emerge, but also a new range of challenges. And that's really what we'll explore in the discipline is how the world's shifting, why the world's shifting, and what the world might look like in the future. Uh, next slide, please. So why study international relations, if that's grabbed your attention? Why study it at Hertfordshire? Um, there are a few kind of, of areas, and I'll expand on this. We offer a personal learning experience. So like the other 
um, disciplines that you've just heard. There are the three routes. There's the, the full time route where you study with us for one year. And then we have the two year routes, uh, one placement route. Uh, and one advanced research route. Um, and the, the rationales for them are the same as the other courses. You can gain experience working in uh, some kind of industry related to international relations and where you can use your transferable skills, or you can gain these extensive research skills that will help you if you want to go into academic research and pursue a, a master's by research or a PhD, but also in the in the industry as well and in other kind of careers, uh, research skills are always important. Um, we have a range of uh, modules, including modules on global ethics and justice, um, international political economy and developmental economy. Um, truth and conspiracy, so this kind of post-truth era that we're entering in global politics and politics in general, um, energy politics, conflict politics, all of these. And importantly, uh, our modules are taught along the lines of research interests of staff. So all staff are published and active academics in the disciplines in which they will teach you. Uh, we have a topical focus, so I've kind of touched upon the, the current nature of the discipline, uh, and we bring our discipline as up to date as possible. We're always making changes to our modules. We're always ensuring that we use examples and case studies um, that are not only current and relevant, but also will appeal to the student bodies that we have and the demographics that we have and ensure that there can be personal experiences brought into the learning dynamics and into the classroom. We have an extremely international cohort, so we have students from all around the world, including the United States, um, West Africa, countries such as Nigeria, Ghana, um, some from East Africa in terms of Kenya, some from the Middle East, uh, and some from South Asia, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, these areas. Um, so it's a very uh, international cohort alongside um, some UK-based home students as well. Um, and I think significantly the geographic location of the University of Hertfordshire really lends itself to the study of international relations. It's, the campus is about a 25 minute train journey from London, uh, and London is the heart and the hub, the political heart and the political hub of the United Kingdom, but also it's a global political hub. Uh, organizations such as Amnesty International Human Rights Watch, uh, the International Institutes for International Studies, um, the Royal Defence Institute, uh, the British government, all of the consulates from the various countries in the world, um, Chatham House, which is the Royal uh, Think Tank or the Royal Accredited Think Tank for International Affairs, are all based in London. And we can use that ease of transport to introduce you um, to the kind of discussions that are ongoing here. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is just a few kind of um, comments from former students. Uh, I'll leave you just a, a minute to kind of look through those. I think the big thing to take away from these is the, the opportunity that you guess, get to pursue your own interests and develop your ideas in, in areas that interest you, um, but also the opportunity to, to discuss these matters with kind of like-minded people and involve yourself really in the debate, which is really at the cutting edge uh, of the discipline. Um, we do a variety of uh, assignments and uh, on the next slide, and which we'll go to now. There's just a short video of some of the work that our students have been doing. During the MA International Relations, students complete many different types of assignments. Here are some examples of what we do. Essays are the backbone of any postgraduate degree. Here are some examples of the different types of topics you may be asked to analyse. With one eye on the future, being able to write a strong policy report will help you in your career outside of university.
Every student produces an extended research project called a dissertation. Here are some examples of projects being completed by Hertfordshire students. Group podcasts are a fun and entertaining way to show your knowledge and demonstrate the ability to work as part of a team. So, starting from Mr. Springer, tell our audience a little introduction to this topic. Yeah, climate change is uh, among uh, the pressing and continuous concern in the current world of politics. Global discussion on the impacts of climate changes as causes and sustainable solutions to the issue are taking place on a worldwide scale among governments, activists, international organizations, scientists, and the general public. As the importance of social media continues to increase, explainer videos give students the opportunity to show their creative side and practice communicating to a general audience. of dirty hands. We can't fully explore the concept of dirty hands without looking at torture. This is a tool which a lot of government agencies uses to obtain information. In any case, torture is morally wrong, but we can say it has a political necessity to it. Torture has been used to obtain information that saves lives, but that doesn't mean the two wrongs can make it right. It is also very important to consider that the problem of dirty hands doesn't just occur to our political leaders. Okay, thank you. That's uh, everything that I have. Brilliant. Thank you so much, colleagues. Um, now, I'm going to give a really quick update on start of term preparation for everybody. Colleagues, If um, I know we've only got a few minutes left, so thank you so much for your time as well. If you do have other engagements and appointments that you need to get to, please feel free to leave when we get to the hour. Um, but everybody in the audience, just a reminder to check your admissions conditions, clear those and make sure your deposits being paid as well so that you can keep progressing towards your CAS stage. Um, now, there are a few things that we'll be doing to help you in your preparation for the start of term. We'll be updating our pre-arrival guide on our website and we'll send you an email once that's ready, especially for September 2023. And we'll also be doing some pre-departure webinars similar to this one, where we'll go through everything that you need to know to help you prepare for travelling to the UK in September. Now, There'll be a lot happening towards the start of term as well. So there'll be orientation week and freshers week. Again, we'll send you more information out about that, but you'll have a chance to speak to the students' union reps, join some societies as well, check out the Heart Squad sports events, and also get to know our chaplain on campus and join some of the religious groups as well if you want to. There's a few things that you can do now. Um, so the university has created a free Getting Ready to Study at Hearts module. Um, there's lots of useful information on there about support teams on campus, tips for academic success, and also some tips from existing international students about things they wish they'd known before they came to the UK. So check that out and the university is going to keep adding to that on the run up to start of term. If you haven't already, this is the perfect time for you to arrange your accommodation. We do strongly recommend you stay on campus wherever possible, just so that you get um, the 24-7 support, all your utility bills, content insurance and Wi-Fi are included. And also you won't have a commute because you'll be right there on campus. If you are looking to live off campus, you must live within a two hour commute or 30 mile radius. Now, I do stress that is the absolute maximum. I would strongly recommend you live in Hatfield so you can still walk to lectures. But if you are looking to stay a bit further away, you must have a look at the um, the commute times, the transport costs and make sure that you factored that into account as well. Because you might find it gets quite expensive. Um, so live as close as you can. Um, 
Now, we do have some videos on the University of Hertfordshire's YouTube channel about room tours for accommodation. So if you do want to check those out, they're tours from existing students who are living in the room. So it's quite nice. So you can make your decision on which room is best for you. Um, and now I'm just going to go and remind you that we also are doing some social media live sessions as well. So feel free to keep an eye on those. We've had a few previously, so you can check those out. Um, and also we'll be running some taster sessions um, with the help of Ben as well. So keep an eye on your emails and we'll be inviting you for those if we run in taster sessions for your course as well. So it's a perfect opportunity for you to learn what it's like, get a taste of what it's going to be like in lectures as well. So well worth joining those. Um, now, I know we do have some questions um, that I can see in, in the Q&A. Um, Colleagues, I was just going to keep it open till about five past so that myself and Jess can answer any questions. If you do need to leave for other appointments, do let us know, but otherwise we'll just answer a couple of questions live as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. What a brilliant session. Um, ben, I was wondering if you can help us answer this question if you have time. Um, a student's asked, what is the core structure for MA International Relations with placement? Uh, so in the first year, uh, it's the, the, exactly the same uh, as every other course. Um, so in semester A, you will take three modules, which are core modules. Um, uh, a theory kind of introductory uh, session, one on global governance uh, module and one on research methods. Um, in the second semester, you will take uh, a module on conflict, uh, peace and security, which is core, and then you get options. So you can choose um, from a module on a uh, new module on truth and conspiracy, one on geopolitics, one on energy politics, one on uh, ethics and politics, or one on uh, international economics. Um, you then uh, hopefully go uh, on placement, and uh, we have a few kind of processes to assist you with this um, for a period of um, a minimum of 30 weeks, returning uh, in May of the second year, um, at which time you then complete your dissertation and, and graduate the following uh, February, I think it will be. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Ben. That sounds like a really interesting course. Thank you. Um, Kat, I'm wondering if you can help me with this question. Uh, a student's asked, can we have a, an idea about the price ranges for on-campus accommodation? Yeah, absolutely. So if you do want to check out on-campus accommodation, um, go to the Hearts website and then there's a whole accommodation section. The prices um, usually range from about £120 per week up to about £250 per week. But that depends on whether you want in sort of a studio room with your own kitchenette and bathroom or if you want to have a room where you do shared facilities with other students as well. Um, but as we've said, all your bills, uh, utility bills, contents, insurance and Wi-Fi are included in those prices as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, and Kat, I've got another question for you. So students are asking, when's the start date for the September intake? So the main start of term um, is on Monday in September and it's the... Uh, 25th. However, some courses will have an earlier start date than that. So please do check your individual offer letter to check your course's start date. The orientation week, that's actually going to start on the 18th of September. So we'd always recommend try and get to the UK in time for that, just so you have a bit of time to settle in, start making friends, learn your way around Hatfield as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, and Ben, I've got another question here that um, a student's asking about what type of modules they'd be studying for MA International uh, Relations for the first year. So for the first year, um, there will be a module, uh, Debates and Dilemmas in International Relations, which takes you through the theoretical dynamics of global politics. So the kind of scaffolding that um, uh, Genevieve talked about uh, so the framework through which we analyze global politics there'll be a research methods module which is closely linked to your dissertation basically preparing you for that individual project uh, and then there'll be a module on uh, global governance um, so kind of the organizations and the way through which the, the world kind of governs itself 
Um, there'll also be uh, a module on conflict, peace and security. So you'll look at the, the um, war dynamics of global politics and the peace and, and how we can maintain security. Um, and then the more specific modules, one on energy and environmental politics, so the interrelationship between those two, um, one, one looking at policy of international political economy, um, one that looks at geopolitics and in particular how it focuses on diplomacy and development, uh, one that looks at, uh, so my module looks at justice and international relations or, or the ethical kind of arrangements and ways through which global politics operates or is controlled in this moral dimension. Uh, and then we've got a brand new module, which is truth and conspiracy in global politics, which picks up very much on those post-truth elements, those conspiracy theory elements that occurred and, and are born out of events like climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic and how those interrelate and help us understand knowledge. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I want to study those modules. They sound brilliant. Thank you, Ben. And thank you so much, everybody, for all of your questions. We don't have time for any more, unfortunately, but I'll pass back to Kat to end the webinar for us. But thank you. Excellent. And a big thank you from me as well to our panellists. Um, such a lot of information there, everyone. So as we've said, we will get the recording up on YouTube and share that with you. If we didn't get to answer your question live today, we're so sorry, but please do email us at international at hearts.ac.uk. If you do have an urgent question, you can call us as well and our team in the UK will be there to help you. Um, colleagues, if you do need to leave, that's absolutely fine. I'm just gonna play one short outro video and we'll answer as many typed questions as we can. Um, for those of us who are staying in the last minutes and then we'll end the session. But thank you very much, everyone. And we look forward to welcoming you in September.